So to be precise over here, I would say that this force is K times negative 4 times negative 5 over 7 squared. So you do plug in the negative one? Oh, no, I just okay. contradicted myself. No, I would not plug in the 4s. Uh, I'm negative. I just plug in the 4 and the 5. Good. And now, if I, wanted to, if I wanted to give actually what the direction was as well at the same time, I would put in x hat. And this would be a full vector description, including both magnitude and the direction. And let's do the same for this. Well, this would be k times 4 times 5 over 7 squared, this is force 2. But now, we see from our picture this is in the negative x direction. So now I would manually just tag on this negative sign here. We can just put in this negative sign ourselves because we've already said this is in the negative direction. And again, this is the way that we could express the forces using the vector notation without having to worry about that confusing r hat notation. We don't need to use the r hat. We can always figure out at the last second whether the direction is in the positive x hat direction or the negative x hat direction. Okay. If they only asked us for the magnitude, I would just write down this. But if they asked for a vector equation, I would have to put in these as well. You know, rather than uh, going through the details of the problem here, let's uh, make sure that we've cleared up the aspects of Coulomb's law, and then we can apply that to the problem. charges here are at distances of negative 4, 0, and 3 on the x-axis, and we have charges of negative 7 coulombs, 3 coulombs, and negative 2 coulombs. Let's see if we can figure out the net force on charge 2. The net force on charge 2. Let's talk through how we would do that. Um, I would find the force between charge 1 and charge 2. Right. And I would find the force between charge 3 and charge 2. Mm -hmm. And then I would Okay, that sounds good. So let's actually do those calculations. I guess we'll have to look up a value for k here. That should be in the inside cover book. Or is it? I think that's the one thing they don't put there, actually. Well, we have um, k, but that's the wrong k. That's the Boltzmann's constant. So can we use that? Oh, yeah, we could, but uh, I, I like K better myself. Uh, so, um, well, yeah, I guess I could. Uh, so I think it's like 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. Okay. If I'm remembering that right, let me look that up. Nine times ten to the ninth is good enough. We'll call that nine times ten to the ninth for k. So 
1.18125 Okay, let's call that 1.2. Times 10 to the 10th, and what would be the units on that? Okay, now this formula here gave us the magnitude. Let us now ourselves manually put in the right sign. What's the correct sign here? Um, so. Good, now we want the force on charge 2. Well, these are unlike charges, so they should be attracting each other. So the force of 1 on 2 should be to the left, so it's important that we put in this negative sign here. Here I used a dot to show we were just finding magnitudes, but here I'll take the dot out to show that we're showing the magnitude and the sign. Good. Should this exponent be positive or negative? Positive. Yeah, that should be positive. Positive magnitude. Yeah. Sign. Here again we have unlike charges. So the force on charge two from charge three is going to be to the right, which is in our positive direction. And as you know, I think it's a good idea to put positive signs in front of positive sign numbers, just like we would put negative signs in front of negative sign numbers. Here we were just figuring out the magnitude with the dot, but here we again put in the sign on our own. And then we would subtract um, the two forces. Right. So, force from... Does it matter? I mean, it would make a difference between which one you subtract or subtract. Probably we shouldn't think of this as subtraction. We should think of this as addition. Any subtraction or addition is going to be taken care of by the signs. When we're taking the net force, that really means we're just adding the forces. We should add the forces, and if anything needs to be subtracted, so to speak, that's going to come out automatically if we put in the correct signs. So the net force here on charge 2 would be the force of 1 on 2 plus the force of 3 on 2, as long as we include the right signs. So the force of 1 on 2 is negative 1.2 times 10 to the 10th, and the force of 2 on 2 is positive 6 times 10 to the 9th. see this number is really twice this number over here. I didn't plan it that way, but this number is twice this one. What are the units on that? Mm. What was the answer to the question then? Um, negative six times three to the ninth. Good. 
Suppose they wanted to, you to express the net force as a vector. Um, if that's the case, then it would be that with an x hat. Right. We simply have to put in that we're working with the x direction here. So we just put in x hat, and we've already got the negative sign in to show that we're in the negative direction. Again, you could have done all this using that r hat equation, mm -hmm. but we get the same answer this way, and I think it's much less confusing than trying to work with the r hat. The only point of the r hat is to give you a single equation that gives you both the direction and the magnitude simultaneously. But that's more confusing than it's worth. We can always just figure out the directions on our own and figure out the magnitudes on our own. And then if we have to put the direction and the magnitude together, it's very easy to do that manually. That's less confusing than dealing with the r hat idea. And that would give us this answer over here. 